Hello there everybody, welcome back. I'm here to be talking about the newest installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quatamania, which yes I know I am very, very behind, but I'm just going to dive right into it. Needless to say, I've been very busy and you know, so, so this movie is the third installment in the Ant-Man trilogy and um, they decide to do stuff a bit different this time, going as they, um, it's the beginning of the new phase, being phase five, and the main bad guy in this is the main bad of the entire new, um, multiverse saga, you know, Kane the Conqueror, and of course he's played once again by Jonathan Majors, which in the Loki, um, show, he made a brief appearance, but a memorable appearance, and... Here he is stuck in the quantum realm and he wants to get out and, you know, be a bad guy basically, take over galaxies, destroy multiple timelines, be a crazy person. And so the crew of Ant-Man Wasp, um, Ant-Man's daughter Cassie, who during the blimp grew up and, you know, the, the Van Dyne family and everyone has to team up to stop him now. Um, one of the main things about this movie is, as you guys know, I was very late to do a review on this. And part of the reason why is, not only am I just tired and exhausted with life, but <laughs> this movie, I just didn't really have that much I wanted to talk about, which obviously is never a good thing about a movie or show that comes out. And the thing about this movie is, like, going in, I saw that it was one of the worst reviewed Marvel movies in the MCU and also it's week-to-week -week performances dropping massively having the biggest second weekend drop and many more things just made me um, a little like skeptical and for the first weekend I just didn't see the movie and it wasn't due to all that because obviously I want to go and form my own opinion and watch why if it is it's so bad or good or whatever it says I just didn't have the time and I think with the problem Marvel has is that they're pushing out so much content, which we are seeing after how um, poorly the second weekend drop and how poorly the reviews were for this movie. They delayed their one of their movies this year, The Marvels, from I believe in July to November. So they pushed that very far back. And I hear they're doing massive reshoots because the movie is performing horribly with test audiences from what I hear. And they cut back on shows that are coming out. The only shows I believe that are coming out this year is Loki Season 2 and Secret Invasion. So they definitely are cutting back on a lot of stuff. They're pushing stuff far back because they realize they're just pumping out too much. And it's doing that thing where it's quantity over quality. They're pushing out so much, half-assing everything they're putting out instead of taking their time and really putting effort and quality into what they're doing. And that's why a lot of people feel burned out. And with this movie, the problems I had with it is like, the thing was is that the cast and all from the movies were, were good. Paul Rudd was great. I love Paul Rudd in almost everything he's in, basically everything probably. He's fun, he's charming, he's just, he's a good action star as well. And there are moments where I laughed in this movie and the audience laughed at stuff that happens, but it just kind of felt like really this was the big introduction this is the main bad this is the integral part of the movie because it just felt like there wasn't that much substance in my opinion with the movie because it kind of is an open and shut case the end credit scenes people are hyping up and all the second end credit scene I will admit was excellent I was shocked I was not expecting that and that makes me excited for that property but the first one was this kind of oh okay so and it's also i gotta admit it's very funny how as you know with most of these marvel movies the bad guy usually loses at the end and this is like an integral main bad guy like a thanos level threat and this guy loses to ant-man so that <laughs> so it's just kind of silly and also, it just like some of the stuff that from the past two movies was missing, like Luis, you know, Ant-Man's friend group, his ex-con, you know, turn good guys, I guess, friend group, like they're not nowhere to be found, which I get stuff has to be cut, 
to, you know, fit with what movie you're telling. But they were one of my favorite additions. I think a lot of people's favorite additions from the previous two Ant-Man films. And for them to be nowhere in here kind of sucks. And there wasn't even a, hey, where are they? Or like nothing. And that was really unfortunate. And if they replaced them with something more, you know, like on their level of, you know, like, well, they're gone, but at least we have this new thing that we like. No. It's just like in the new characters they introduce, because there's a whole world and stuff in the quantum realm, which they never really said or referenced or anything, but okay, that's cool. And none of them, like, some of them were okay, but it's, I can't remember, I, honest to God, I can't not remember their names. They, they did not leave an impact on me as an audience member. And it sucks because I thought the film was fine. Like it was, it was kind of meh. It kind of reminded me of like a Thor Love and Thunder where people say it's the worst thing ever and it's trash and all that hoopla. And I'm just like, it isn't like God awful or nothing like, like worst movie of all time type of thing. But like, like I've been saying, if your reaction coming out of the movie is, it's not as bad as everyone says it is. That's, that's not good at all. <laughs> that's not good at all for that to be people's general reaction. It was better than I thought it would be. And that sucks because the first two Ant-Mans I think are very underrated. People generally I think like the first one. A lot of people hate the second one. Which I think those same people are going to be like, that second one's not so bad now. Especially after sitting through this. And like, as I was saying though, that's pretty much my general thoughts on this movie. Unfortunately, it has some good performances. The cast that they have back, you know, the Van Dynes, Ant-Man, his daughter, like all of them do very solid. And Jonathan Majors, even though I didn't really like how his character was treated, especially at the end because he's supposed to be the big bad, you know, and all that, I thought the actor did a tremendous job and he really was the saving grace of this movie. If, he, if it was a different actor who wasn't as good, the movie would be worse in my opinion. So he did everything he could to carry this movie. Literally like great work from the acting department. And another nitpick of mine, is I know VFX and all is kind of overused at this point and Marvel in particular how they treat their VFX talent and all is horrible but this movie like in a lot of ways <laughs> in a lot of ways it reminded me of um for one Shark Boy and Lava Girl with Modoc looking like Mr. Electric I'm sorry I I, I had to make that comparison cuz they both look so <laughs> But also the green screen throughout the entire movie constantly kept taking me out of the movie because it just looked so bad and it was just really jarring to look at throughout the entire runtime. But again, that's enough ranting and complaining for one day. Those are my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Again, not a god-awful movie like a lot of people are saying, but it's really hard for me to say it's a good movie when there's just so many issues in my opinion with it, but there are some good that kind of combat against the bad, but yeah, that was it guys. I'm <laughs> it, this was not it. But again, thank you all so much for watching. It means a lot to me. If you want to hit the subscribe button and the bell as well to get notified when I upload, that'll be great. And thank you all again, and I'll hope to catch you all in the next video. Bye.